Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Uh, right now, what I'm going to do is turn it back over to my gracious host, Mr. Steve Meisinger. And uh, as always, Steve, it's been fun. Mike, thank you very, very much. Uh, you always do a great job in making something that's very, very complicated, complex, and explaining it in a very simple way. So I appreciate that, explaining the difference between strangles and straddles. Uh, that is a challenge, and I present, uh, and I think that the, you just do a great job of um, teaching investors, again, something that sometimes could take a lot longer than the amount of time that you actually had. So thanks again. Question for you, Mike, and again, I want everyone to type in their questions. When you're looking at, let's say, volatility, um, what do you look at? I mean, do you look at how much that, let's say, if we're looking at U.S. Canadian, do you look at the historic volatility of that pair? Do you look at the options market, the implied uh, volatility to come up with your view? Because, again, your view is, might be different, and that's why you might make a trade versus the market's view. Uh, what do you look at when you're looking at straddles or strangles and considering those alternatives? Well, in terms of volatility, there's there's several ways with which you can look at it. Um, right now, we're not, just because of what's going on in Greece, we're not in any uh, neutral-based strategy. We, we, our position on a lot of, on, from the short-term trading, trading standpoint on all these, uh, we're neutral right now on the currency side of it. And when I say neutral, meaning that we're flat. We don't have a specific position. Right. Uh, we're kind of kind of waiting for the smoke to clear with Greece uh, on, on that standpoint. So um, with that, some ways with which you can look at volatility. Uh, number one, uh, charting. Uh, if you believe that volatility is low, then you can go. You can just look at a, a, a chart, and it's on the Options Express website as well as the Brokers Express website. And a lot of brokers offer this. Is you can say, okay, I'm looking at historically what the volatility is, and I'm comparing it to what an average of the implied volatility is. And uh, a lot of charts like this are on iVolatility.com as well. But what concerns me in terms of relating historical to implied volatility is that. A lot of people just look at it and say, okay, implied volatility is much higher than the 30, 60, and 90-day historical volatility of the underlying. I think it's time to sell some options because obviously options are well overpriced. So with that, I think it's time to be an option seller because implied volatility is above historic. I think that's one indicator, and if that's the only indicator that you're, use, that you're using, I think you're destined for failure, or you're destined for a blowout, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, I, I think it's a good indicator to look at, but I think you need to look at what the what the story is. Now, if you were to compare, if you were to look at, let me bring. I'm just looking in my screen right now to see if I can come up with a good example on this. Uh, EUU, uh, the euro. EUU, the implied volatility on the options on EUU is quite a bit higher than the historical volatility. So with makes that, sense, right? that makes you would sense, just say, considering what you were just saying, right? Yeah, but with what's going on in Greece, there's a lot of fear right. in the marketplace. So that's a kind of a, a scary thing as to what's going on with uh, volatility. And that, that's a good point, Mike. I mean, you could almost gauge when people are more scared of the market because they buy more options. Implied volatility tends to go higher versus historic when people are scared. So people look at the fear factor, or let's say VIX. Well, you can look at the fear factor of currency options, or for that matter, equity options, and always look at the implied versus historic and see when the market is expecting a bigger move by just looking at the implied versus the historic. Although, as you said, you've got to be careful if you do that because just because the implied is higher doesn't mean that it's going to revert back to the historic. Uh, that's right. a good point. A uh, question that 
from Anne Marie. Anne Marie has a business in Canada, and she says that she'd like to do some hedging because she's concerned about the U.S. dollar. Uh, she asked me for some ideas, and I typed in a couple. But, Mike, w what about someone that had a business, let's say, in Canada, and uh, they, uh, they had a business in Canada, but they did uh, business with U.S. and they actual U.S. citizens and took in U.S. currency? Uh, w could you offer them a couple of solutions if they were concerned about the U.S. dollar? Uh, I'm sorry, is, is Anne Maria, Can are you a Canadian citizen? She's a Canadian, yes, and she does business, I guess, in the U.S., receives U.S. dollars, uh, and is concerned about those accounts receivable being in, okay. in U.S. dollars. Okay. Um, well, with that, um, and I, I'm not registered in Canada, but a couple of things with which I would definitely su suggest considering, uh, the very basic with which you can do, obviously, CDD is the underlying for the Canadian dollar. It's dollar-based, so uh, if the U.S. dollar goes down, then CDD is going to go down. So if you're concerned with the U.S. dollar going down, then I think the first thing with which you could take a look at would be just simply buying puts on it. Now, looking, I'm looking at a chart of CDD right now. I'm looking at a volatility chart of CDD. And very low, right? Yeah, very it, low. It, that, it is very low historically. Now, just because it's low doesn't mean it's going to go higher. So with right. that, I'm going to quote uh, the man, Alex Jacobson, just because volat volatility is only low if you think it's low, and it's only high if you think it's high. But let's <laughs> say you think it's low right now, and you think it's going to increase. Well, if that's the case, if that's your thought on it, then a diagonal spread would be something to consider, because you'd be locking in the lower volatility on the longer-term option, meaning you're buying an option, say, several months out, and selling near-term options. So uh, just in looking at it, uh, CDD, the options go out to December of 2010. Now, I'm not able to give any specific recommendations. I, I understood. Never, right. never would cause unless I know my client. But right. with that, you can go out and lock in whatever the volatility is for a longer-term month and buy a put option. Now, with right. that, of course, the first gut reaction is that, well, I don't like doing that. I don't want to take on all that premium risk. Well, you can sell some near-term puts as a diagonal or possibly a calendar put spread in the meantime. Now, that's something that would require a lot of active management, uh, but those would be probably the two directions with which I would start my search on uh, in, in that situation. Good point. Good point. Uh, John just has a – and neither of us can you really answer this one, but John says, is the euro going to go away? Is it in danger of going away? And that – you know, Mike, I guess we, you and I could talk about this, but right now we're, when we talk, when we listen, when we read about Greece, uh, the idea that Euro is going to go away because of Greece, that seems far-fetched to me. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, we know, as you mentioned, volatility is really high in the Euro. Uh, and the whole idea of trading is anticipating these events. Um, you and I have talked about this on this a webinar series, you know, months and months ago that something might happen. We don't know. We, we weren't we're actually saying it was going to be Greece, but, you know, volatility might pick up. Of course, it really picked up, uh, I guess, more so in the euro, uh, and that was because of Greece. And there were other guests that came on that actually made that call that Greece could actually take the euro down a bit. So, John, I'd urge you to come back and not only, from you know, listen to Mike, go back to the archives, but there are other guests that make – specific recommendations. Mike doesn't do that. Mike really talks more about option strategies and how to fine-tune your portfolio. Isn't that correct, Mike? Yeah, that's true. I, I'll, to my clients, I can give all the recommendations that I correct. want, but just I'm, I'm limited because uh, I just have the obligation and I'm regulated by the SEC and that type of thing. So. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.